Hi guys, Keith Myers here again. Wanted to do a little bit more about peekaboo boxing. You're probably wondering why is this guy keep talking about peekaboo boxing in a Jeet Kune Do forum? Well, I think I talked about before how if you're looking at you know further areas to develop that maybe Bruce Lee didn't finish exploring, I think fighting on the inside is one of them, right? And so while I think the, the outfighting phase in Jeet Kune Do is very well developed. What Bruce Lee left for us is great, and there's guys on this forum that are far better at it than I am, but I think maybe talking about some of this infighting might be something where, someplace where I can make a little bit of a contribution, okay? I was playing with peekaboo boxing kind of as a martial art, how to use it in a self-defense scenario for a long time, and then just recently I came across one of Sifu uh, Jason Carroll's videos where he was talking about Bruce Lee and Mike Tyson and how Bruce Lee would have really liked Mike Tyson and fighting on the inside and that just clicked for me. I never considered making that part of my Jeet Kune Do before, but it makes perfect sense. So I wanted to talk about that a, a little more so you see where I'm coming from. Now, you know, there's been this whole debate about, was, is there four ranges, is there five ranges, is there really a kicking range, a punching range? You know, that's a debate we can have. I like to think about things as outfighting and infighting and ground fighting. That simplifies it for me. I mentioned that in the forum at one point, and I kind of got poo-pooed, you know. But it, it, it's, it's that kind of distinction is pretty, people in, understand it pretty instinctively, I think. Outfighting, Bruce Lee, that's what really, where Bruce Lee really shined. Outfighting is when I'm on the outside, I've got plenty of room to move, I've got to move in and punch and get back out again. That's outfighting. Infighting is where I am within range. I'm in this close and I'm trapping, I'm covering up, maybe doing some limited grappling and punching in close. Different animal, different footwork compared to outfighting. Outfighting, I can use fencing like footwork, that fast in and out, right? Evasive. When I get at this range, that changes. I can't move that way unless I go back out to outfighting again, in which case I'm no longer infighting. So there's two distinct differences there, okay? Now, so again, outfighting, infighting. Infighting is important and is an area where I think Bruce Lee may have started to work and really didn't finish it off well. We all know Bruce Lee was a Jack Dempsey fan and you've probably seen that, that backyard training footage in black and white of Bruce Lee when he's working his big canvas heavy bag where he's working on Dempsey's shoulder whirl. He was a big fan of Jack Dempsey. He had film of Jack Dempsey. He had Jack Dempsey's book. He really liked that. And I think Jason Carroll made an excellent point that had Bruce Lee lived, he would have been a huge Mike Tyson fan because Mike Tyson was shoulder whirl perfected. I mean, he. He was Jack Dempsey taken to the next level, really. When Customato was developing peekaboo boxing, he looked at two sources. He looked at, at a guy called Slapsy Maxi Rosenblum, and he looked at Jack Dempsey. Slapsy Maxi Rosenblum wasn't a big champion like Dempsey, but he had over 300 fights. How do you have a career that lasts that long? By not taking damage. The dude was hard to hit. And he was hard to hit because he had this fast, evasive head movement. But he was called Slapsy Maxi because he didn't punch very hard. So he wasn't knocking people out. Dempsey, however, developed that shoulder whirl and that power on the inside. But he got hit a lot. So Customato, being the boxing genius that he was, said, how about if we put those two things together and peekaboo boxing was born, okay? And I think if Bruce Lee had been around to see it, he would have really liked what Customato came up with because when we're looking at Jeet Kune Do, it's the way of the intercepting fist, right? Intercepting means catch the guy before he can catch you. So it was a, a form of counterpunching, right? Counterpunching in the sense that I'm here, I want to time the guy, and he's punching at me, and maybe I use a little bit of a parry, but I hit him as he's trying to hit me. That whole idea of intercepting is counterpunching, right? That's why it's more of a self-defense system. I'm, I'm, you know, here I'm, I'm waiting for the guy to come, and I'm being evasive. I'm getting out of his way is a better defense, and then counter punching versus blocking and hitting, which was the classic for his day, right? 
So when we get on the inside, how do we apply that at infighting range? Mike Tyson was known as an aggressive counterpuncher. He was moving all the time, drawing the guy's blow, right? The guy's punch comes in. He's moving to counter counterpunching immediately. That was the whole centerpiece of peekaboo boxing was the counterpunching. You're going in, you draw the guy's fire, but you're evasive. How do you be evasive on the inside? On the outside, you're evasive with your footwork as well as your body movement. On the inside, things change, and I have to be evasive in a little different way, okay? But it's still being evasive, like Bruce Lee taught. It's still using counter punching, like Bruce Lee taught. So see, it's starting to kind of sound more and more like Jeet Kune Do on the inside to me, okay? Now, we can also use some limited trapping. I wish there was a better way to give Bob some arms to get this to stay in place. But I think I mentioned before, we can still do things like trapping where I'm coming in, pinning an arm and hitting the guy, right? That's still valid. Boom! And then I'm right into my boxing range. We can do things that are almost Wing Chun-like, where I'm covering up, I'm here, and I can do this kind of thing to make openings for my punches, right? Because I've done a, a lot of Wing Chun. That's, that's another comment to make. I've done a lot of Wing Chun. Wing Chun is an infighting system, but Wing Chun is a self defense system. And if you look at it that way, then all the forms and chi sao and drills start to make sense. Of course, this is a topic for a whole other discussion. But the point I'm making is that there are a lot of parallels between peekaboo boxing as an infighting system and Wing Chun as an infighting system and then looking at the other aspect of Jeet Kune Do as an outfighting system. If I'm fighting from a distance, if I'm outfighting, I've got them relatively narrow because everything is based on my lead hand and foot, and I want to make a narrow target that's as hard to hit the possible, as possible. The more I start to use my rear hand, the more square I have to be so that the punch can come through. So as I get closer, as the range closes, I get a little wider, a little more squared on my opponent. Right? If I'm way out here, I can still use distance. As I get closer and I want to use my rear hand, I have to think I'm a little more square so I can still reach him. When I get this close, I want to be using both hands equally, I'm almost square to the opponent. That's why Wing Chun uses this as a training stance and pivots. So you can use both hands equally. So I'm Pretty much square to the opponent. Where Wing Chun people go wrong is when they try to make it an outfighting movement from here and they're trying to spar and chase the guy around like this. You know, it just breaks down because Wing Chun is an infighting method. So, likewise, I'm doing a Jeet Kune Do. I get closer and closer to this guy. I need to get more and more square so I can use both hands and I can pivot and move and still use my evasiveness from that position. And that's peekaboo boxing. Okay. And from the aspect of simple and direct, which also makes it Jeet Kune Do, my emphasis is on hitting the guy. Hit the guy. I'm not trying to do joint locks. I'm not trying to do throws. I'm not trying to be fancy. I'm doing the most simple and direct, efficient thing I can do. Hit the guy. I hit the guy hard. And so I'm covering, I'm defending, and I'm hitting. So. Aggressive counter punching and make my offense and defense the same thing as much as possible. Isn't that another Jeet Kune Do idea? Right? I, offense and defense combined. Same way with my peekaboo boxing, I'm being evasive, and this is actually setting up, it's loading for the punch. So the defense, the offense is part of the defense. It's that aggressive counter punching combined offense and defense. Okay? That's also part of the people who box it. So when you're, this is another thing that you see, watch video of people working their bag. You see a lot of this. Which is good, but that's out fighting. When you really see in fighting on the bag, it's not at this range, at this level, it's here. where I'm working in fighting. And he 
these elbows aren't elbow strikes. These are controls. These are putting it right in the guy's chest. Boom. To make room. To trap. So, when we're looking at people who boxing as a martial art for self-defense, then we can start using a lot of Wing Chun-ish type things. Folding and hitting. Trapping arms. Stuff that comes right out of Jeet Kune Do. Or Wing Chun. But that would be illegal in boxing. Why is it illegal in boxing? Because it works. Otherwise, it wouldn't be illegal. Right? So those can all come into this area of infighting as long as they're as direct and efficient as possible. Okay? So, hope that all makes sense. There's a lot we could do for peekaboo boxing, but I'm not really here to teach you peekaboo boxing. I'm just trying to make the point that while a lot of people have argued that ground fighting, grappling, is an area not fully developed by Bruce Lee, and that's what they're exploring and training, that's great. I think another area that wasn't fully developed by Bruce Lee was this infighting range, right? And if you're considering that, take a look at the Blue Boxing and see how it fits. I think it fits with the Jeet Kune Do concepts and principles perfectly. So I feel comfortable saying, yeah, I've added this, but I still think this falls under the label of Jeet Kune Do because it still fits a lot of the same concepts and principles in what we're doing from an outfighting range, even though now I'm close to an infighting range. Okay? So that's it.